Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today I'm going to teach you how to take the derivative of an exponential function. So when it comes to taking a derivative of one of these special types of functions, the key to remembering them is that it pretty much works like e to the x. As a quick example, check out where I'm taking the derivative of 5 to the power of x. You'll notice that as I'm taking the derivative, we keep that 5 to the x part, and the only additional piece is actually this piece right here where we're taking the natural log of 5. Let's do a couple of quick examples, that way it sticks in our mind and really go from there. So again, this is really just based off of taking the derivative of our regular exponential function. And in case you didn't uh, remember, the derivative of something like e to the x really is just e to the x. So you want to keep that in mind when taking the derivative of your other exponential functions if they have a different base. So if we're taking the derivative of something like 7 to x, I'm going to start off exactly the same way. I'm going to start off with 7 to the power of vx. And then the only additional piece I need to put on, since it has a different base, is we'll go ahead and put on the natural log of 7, and there, we are done. Uh, and just like that, you can take the derivative of any of your exponential functions, even if you have a different base. Now, once you get really familiar with using this rule for your exponential functions, you can, of course, mix this with our other rules for derivatives. And, of course, my favorite one with really mixing it up is using the chain rule. So look how we can do an example like something like 5 raised to the power of sine of x. Okay, So we're going to take this derivative and we're going to use the chain rule on it. The first thing I need to do is really take the derivative of the outside function. And in taking the derivative of the outside, that's where I'm taking the derivative of that exponential function. So we're going to start with 5 to the power of, in this case, we'll keep the inside exactly the same, sine of x. And then we'll have this natural log of 5. Of course, that's coming from the base being 5. right? That really takes care of the derivative of the outside. Now we will multiply by the derivative of the inside. Since our inside function is sine, we're going to multiply by cosine of x. And there you go. That would represent the derivative of 5 raised to the power of sine of x. Let's do just one more of these for good measure, where we're taking the derivative of 3 to the power of x, all multiplied by the square root of x. In order to do something like this, of course, we will use the product rule. And as we're taking the derivative of some of these individual functions, the derivative of 3 to the power of x will also show up. All right. So let's go ahead and identify our functions that we have in here. So I'm going to call this first one f. I'm going to call the second one g. Uh, and I'm really just doing that so I can remember my product rule. So I'll be taking the first function as it is multiplied by the derivative of the second, second function as it is, multiplied by the derivative of the first. So those are the pieces that we're going to put into our product rule. All right, starting off with the first part, so we'll have the function just as it is, which of course is 3 to the power of our x. Now we'll multiply by the derivative of g. Uh, since it's a square root, this will be 1 divided by 2, and we have the square root of x. All right, so those are being multiplied together. Plus, now we have our g function just as it is, so no, no real change in that one. We'll just have the square root of x. And now, now we actually need to multiply by the derivative of our f function. So here's where that derivative comes into play. So 3 to the power of our x multiplied by the natural log of 3. Uh, all right, we could do a little bit of cleaning up with this particular problem just if we want to make it look a little prettier. But other than that, it's completely done. We have our derivative like we need to, uh, and of course, Part of finding that derivative is making sure we're really comfortable with this exponential rule. All right.